My name is Burju Karabina. I am teaching mathematics at Florida Atlantic University. I'm also coordinating Math for Liberal Arts 1 and 2, and I'm also chairing the Committee of Teaching and Innovation at FAU. Yeah, the numbers actually speak here. The number of students who suffer from overwhelming anxiety at a college level is about 67% which was 50% higher than five years earlier. These numbers are from 2016. Students start uh, feeling anxious in classroom as early as four or five years old. So this invisible influence affects their working memory. Working memory is responsible for uh, guidance for decision-making. It's responsible for behavior and uh, students need their working memory in full capacity for reasoning. And if working memory is overloaded with these uh, negative emotions, then students cannot learn and retain information. Therefore, they um, think and learn less, which obviously affects their academic performance. Math anxiety has been around for about 60 years, so the problem is a bit more dramatic there. And if it, it affects their career choices at such an early age. They don't want to go into the STEM field, but now we live in a technology era. We have thousands of high-tech jobs that needs to be filled in. We don't have the workforce with the set of skills that are required for those jobs. So if we could change that feeling at an early age, that would be great. But if we could change that feeling at any time, that's good too. Because math anxiety is content anxiety. It's not just uh, appears in academia. People uh, feel anxious and they will feel the symptoms whenever they deal with the numbers, even if even in their daily life. So it's not only affecting their uh, academic performance, it's affecting their lives. So it's been around for, for a lot longer and it is socially acceptable to say that I'm not good at math and go away with it and then they avoid the problem for so long and then when it comes to the college they realize that oh this is something that needs to be addressed. It's there. You can tell as soon as you walk into a classroom of 100. Uh, but there is a difference between non-STEM majors and STEM majors. Math anxiety is also there for STEM majors, so we tackle that differently. But I'm coordinating math for liberal arts students. I'd say uh, math anxiety is a lot higher in those classes. These students have been suffering from math anxiety for a very long time because math anxiety usually starts <coughs> at a very early age. So they come to school with these like 10 years of anxiety and uh, they avoid math activities. Majors, class sizes are a lot smaller. So it's easier to make that personal connection with the students. I know them by their names at the end of, say, third week. We use learning assistance. We offer more help. We use interactive learning in a classroom environment. But um, Math for Liberal Arts courses, <clears throat> in a typical classroom, there are 100 students, one instructor, podium, and rows of students. The first time I taught this course, I felt like there was like a big wall between me and my students. I'm delivering the content. I ask them, do you have any questions? They all had questions, but I didn't see a single show of hands. So I thought I should, I need to punch a hole in this wall. I need to get there and help them. I was using student response systems so I can collect data, so we can talk about data in class and then reflect on that and then talk about uh, like how we can improve overall success in class with my students. But I experienced so many technical problems, that's when I started using Top Hat in Math for the Arts courses. So on a typical day, I start the course with a discussion about a very basic math concept, like sets. Everybody knows they are sets. So I tell them, you know all about sets. Yes, we do. Okay, tell me the definition. And then 
they lack. I think I know what it is, but it's hard to tell. I'm like, that's okay, give me the pieces. We'll put it all together and we'll come up with a definition. So they are involved in the process of learning at the very beginning. And then we come up with a definition. I go over a few examples and then I say, now it's your turn. Because the best way to learn math is to do math. I tell them these questions that I'm asking you on top of, I'm not testing you. I'm not timing it. I'm just encouraging you to give it a try. And if you do it right, you can maybe help the next person sitting next to you. So it creates a very dynamic learning environment. I ask them a question and then we look at the data all together. If the success rate is about 50%, maybe we go over that example again. And then it really makes them feel good to see that they're not the only people uh, failing in their first attempts. And then they, it's easier for them to accept that failing is a part of learning and we do it all together. I've always believed in three stages of learning. There is information, there is confirmation, and there is extension. What we did traditionally all these years was just information, flow of information, content delivery in the classroom. And then we send students home with a lot of information they don't know what to do with. So they were left alone for the confirmation and extension part. What I'm trying to do is to bring the confirmation part to classroom. Information is content delivery. Again, I control the pace of the course. And then the confirmation is where students apply those ideas and basically practice those skills. So if the confirmation is happening in class, then the extension is easier for students to handle. So we were always missing these two components in the past and uh, Top Hat helped me to bring the confirmation part into classroom and then make a connection between the confirmation and extension part. At the beginning of the semester, most of my students will feel a little nervous in a classroom of 100. It's also a big classroom. They have possibly failed some of the math courses in the past. And um, during the semester, it's really nice to see how they build confidence in solving problems, how they feel confident uh, with asking for help if they need to. And then it's really nice to see my students engaged in a math conversation at the end of the semester. Those students avoided their math for such a long time. After three months of adventure, let's say, they, now they speak math. And then some of my students received their first A's in their math courses, and they're so happy. It's really nice to see how that confidence builds up over the semester. The only way to overcome math anxiety is to do math.